don't know what it is about this song, dude. The like bop 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 in the background. It, it sounds like I don't know, like a little kid is like, I can play too. I can also join in on this. <laughs> um, I need a couple more minutes. I'll be here in just a sec. Uh, if you haven't grabbed a drink yet, you've got time. I'll be right back.
sorry that took so long. How are we all doing? Let's make sure the camera's working. It is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Terra Nil was not only recommended by you guys a bunch, um, but also uh, by Jesse on Geek Enders. So I figure, sure, I'll play it. Oh my gosh, my hands are so cold. Don't say 30 minute pre-show is normal. That makes me feel like shit. <laughs> I don't want that to be normal. I don't mean to make you guys wait that long. Banger soundtrack? Yeah. It's all the the video game study lounge playlist. It's good. Yeah, I pretty frequently use it. No beanie, no beanie. My mother-in-law um, took Clarky to school, and she was like, you look rough. <laughs> I was like, yeah. She was like, make yourself a nice cup of coffee. Go take a long shower. Wash all the worries off. Go to work feeling good. Just, I'll take Clark to school. I was like, thank you. <laughs> so... So shout out to my mother-in-law. She also, um, I think Sam was talking about how like uh, our house has just like, just figuring out where things should go has become really overwhelming to me. Um, for us, for both of us, uh, both Sam and I, when we try and like deal with it, we're like, I don't know. <laughs> And so she came over and she was like, all right, Wednesday morning before you start work, we're just going to choose a spot and we'll just work on it. And if if you want to do another one next Wednesday, I'll come back over next Wednesday morning. And I was like, OK. <laughs> I know it was very sweet. We have these huge boxes full of like cords. Um, and I kept saying like, but it's fine because I'm pretty sure most of those we don't use anymore. And I was saying that to Sam, cause I was like, we've got these boxes of cords this weekend. Let's just put something on TV and go through the boxes of cords. Cause I'm pretty sure we're going to just throw a lot of them away. And Sam was like, not to upset you, but I have dug around in these boxes three times just this week to find a cord that I needed. And I was like, no, don't say that. It's <laughs> like, I don't think we're going to throw away maybe as many as you're expecting. Um, but, but uh, who knows? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Come on then. Come on then. Thank you. I moved into my house almost eight years ago and I still have boxes of stuff. That does make me feel way better. Yeah. <laughs> I use an unpacked box as my nightstand and it's been three years. Have you been there for a year now? Nearly, right? N nearly a year at this point. Um, but you know, we were kind of like into houses for a long period of time last year. Um, but Clark and I were exclusively living here starting around this time last year, yeah. I 
I have boxes from past moves I never unpacked before moving multiple times. Yeah, I was looking around and I was like, I do think that there are some things that I haven't really looked at since we came from America, right? Like, um, and I want to believe that a lot of those are just sentimental things that we don't necessarily need all the time. But I know that the truth is that I'll open some of those up and be like, why did we bring this? I don't even remember. <laughs> But what matters is that it gets dealt with one day. <laughs> what matters is that eventually you look at it and go, today I'm going to figure out what the fuck is going on with this, you know. I tried another makeup hack today. Makeup hacks. And I would do it differently next time. The hack was using a cheek and lip stain and just and just l like leaving it on for a long time um, so that it hopefully lasts more than a day. Uh, I used a makeup sponge to put it on my cheeks and it looks it's kind of blotchy. It's not bad, but it's just a little bit blotchy. And I think I would want it to be less Less blotchy. I don't know what word to use other than that. But I like the color. I'm, I'm fine with, like, the tone of it. I just need to. Yes, and I'm wearing a couple of tiny, tiny lashes on the edges this time instead of full ass. Thanks, free. <sighs> oh my god, I just realized that we didn't take Clark's nail polish off this morning. Oh well. <laughs> oh well, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might get a I might get a call later. Like gentle reminder that kids aren't allowed to wear nail polish to school. And then I I can play ignorant. I didn't know. I didn't know she would put on nail polish. She's so tricksy. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like an odd rule it's not I'm not here <laughs> there's so much stuff that they've relaxed on though. Um, Cause like the kids aren't supposed to have ear piercings, but a couple of the kids do. And they apparently have never said anything. Um, they aren't supposed to wear nail polish, but Clark has accidentally worn nail polish to school multiple times because she just, she knows how to do her nail polish. So sometimes she'll just sneak away and do nail polish. And I'll be like, okay, but in the morning we got to remember to take that off and we never do. Um, uh, there's a specific type of shoe that they're all supposed to wear. I went to pick Clark up at a certain point and it was really rainy and another kid was just wearing like basically nice black boots. And I was like, I'm going to get Clark some boots cause fuck this. <laughs> and they're her favorite shoes and she just wears black boots to school every day now. And they have never said anything about it. So... <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, there's stuff that's worth making a stink about, and I guess stuff that's not. <laughs> and they just.
They've changed the uniform rules to include specific shoes now. Well, it's like matte black flats or, you know, it'll, you don't have to buy a specific shoe from a specific store, but it'll be like, they should be flat black shoes with a matte finish sort of thing. And you have a bunch of options there, you know, all across the board in terms of like financially. Um, but literally I kept being like, it is soaking outside. <laughs> if my kid walks in the wrong thing, her socks are just soaked. So the boots have been a lifesaver. That's also totally true. It also depends on like, is your kid going to private school? Are they, you know, they'll have more specific things that you have to get depending. <laughs> Rules only exist if they're enforced. Damn. Put that on a shirt. We had to change to clip on ties at my secondary school because no one wore them properly. Yeah, I mean, I also didn't grow up somewhere with uniforms. Most of America doesn't have uniforms unless you're going to, like, a private school or something, you know. But all of England, it's kind of the opposite. Like, really specific schools will have a no dress code thing. Um, or no, no uniforms, I should say. And everybody else does have uniforms. Um, it's standard out here, so I've had to learn a lot. But... When we go to America, Clark's always watching kids like get on and off of the school bus. She's like, why the fuck <laughs> do they get to wear whatever they want to school? And I'm like, I know, dude. My private boarding school had a more relaxed dress code than my public school. That is weird. Yeah, I mean, you know, Clark is going to a, like a primary school, like a little a little kids school. So, um I don't know what it's like as they get older if things get more or less strict. Cause it seems like I see plenty of, you know, like high schoolers, what, whatever they call high school and middle school here. Like as kids get older, it seems like they're able to wear like a little bit of jewelry. They're able to, you know, do whatever they want with their hair and all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the school that I went to when I was younger was technically a private school because it wasn't a public school, but um, I would say it was way more backwoods than a, than a public school would be. Uh, and at a certain point, they were like, maybe we should do uniforms. Maybe uniforms would be a good idea because we were K through 12 and there weren't even 100 of us. 
<clears throat> they were like, maybe uniforms would be a great idea. And it was so split. Like half of us were like, no. And the other half of us were going, yeah, that would be fine. But at the end of the day, again, because it was like just like a weird backwoods school, a lot of the parents were going, I'm fine with the idea of uniforms, but unless we're getting financial help with getting the uniforms for our kids, it's kind of a it's kind of a non-starter. Like <laughs> out here, everybody assumes they're gonna have to buy a fucking uniform and three shirts and whatever, you know. But that's not an assumption in America. You don't budget for that. The school does not provide uniforms, no. What they do, which is nice, is frequently throughout the year, at least at the school that we're at, frequently throughout the year they'll do um, like an old uniform sale. So there will be specific days after school that you can go in and there will be a table run by the, the Parent Teacher Association. And they'll just have tons of old uniforms for like nothing. <laughs> so every time they do that, whatever size Clark is currently wearing, we get another one. Um, because it's just, it's just really nice to have like two of everything basically. I mean, we would rec when I would go to the basically the only time that I would interact with other schools had to do with dance team. And I think that might also be true for a lot of other kids is like most of the time their interactions with another school was in like a competitive sphere. Um, otherwise, there was just no reason for the schools to interact. So we would know what school all of the kids in uniforms were from, but it was because there were only a few schools that would go to state dance team and things like that. Um, and like attend competitions that wore uniforms and that, that sort of uniform um, look and vibe and all of that would, would also carry over into what they wore all the time at these competitions. <laughs> yeah, very sports anime, yeah. As someone foreign to the UK school system, are there other dress code requirements, the kind of hairstyle or color you're allowed to have? Um, what hairstyle you can have? No. Or like length of hair? No. At least at the school we're at, it's length of hair regardless of the sex of the child or anything like that it doesn't it doesn't matter what does matter is on days when they are going to be doing some sort of physical activity so on pe days basically um you have to have their hair out of their face so um i have to remember which days she has pe because we have to put her hair up um but again if your hair is short it's not, it's not an issue. But at least again, in a, in a school of really little kids, <laughs> um, no, they don't, they don't say what is and isn't appropriate for a hairstyle. They don't specify that.
Yeah, they can't dye their hair, um, which again is like not really a huge issue when they're that little. Obviously, there are dyes that don't have anything dangerous in them um, that are perfectly fine to use on little kids, but it's it's not a thing that pops up a lot, you know, with kids this, this little. Um, they're not supposed to wear jewelry. Um, they can absolutely wear stuff in their hair. Um, generally, it seems like everybody tries to, you know, use like hair barrettes and beads and things that, um, match the school uniform, but I don't know if that's just so that things match or, um, Or if it's because it's written in there somewhere. I doubt it is, though. <laughs> but, like, yeah, you know, there are all sorts of kids at her school that have a variety of different protective hairstyles for their hair type. Um, and, and they'll have all kinds of things in their hair, but generally it's, it's in the color palette of, of the uniform. It seems like as long as it doesn't seem like they care very much what you put in your hair. I got in trouble for a crocodile temporary tattoo. You know what's funny is after school one day is just like a fun thing for the kids. Um, somebody came out and was doing glitter tattoos. <laughs> one of the parents just set up like a little glitter tattoo thing um, for the kids after school. And a bunch of them uh, the, the next day came in and just still had it on, right? <laughs> so we were like, I guess for today, <laughs> glitter tattoos are fine because <laughs> a bunch of kids are coming in with them on right now. Glitter tattoos are very fetch right now, yeah. The kids, they love them. Um, the explanation that is given to the little kids for why they can't wear like jewelry and stuff, except on special like non-uniform days, is um, is because you don't want it to get lost, which is totally fair and <laughs> and a believable reason. Um, but, you know, I think it's also just a we don't want a kid coming in with like a really cute bracelet and then being like, look at my cute bracelet and all of the other kids going, I want a cute bracelet. Right. And it just they just don't want that sort of situation either. So it's just easier for them to be like, oh, but what if it gets lost and there's no way to put a name on it, <laughs> you know. They do have show and tell days. We brought one of the tortoises in for her last show and tell. And she's been so jazzed for show and tell to come back around. I don't know what the plan is, though, for, for this next show and tell. I don't know <coughs> what she's thinking about doing. <laughs> Are kids allowed to wear costumes to school on like Halloween and stuff? So the way that, hi, Summer. The way that our school does it is there are set non-uniform days and they're always associated with like a charity that the school has picked out. So every non-uniform day, your kid can show up wearing whatever they want and brings a pound coin and all of the pound coins from all of the parents go toward whatever charity has been picked out for that day. Um... So, yeah, so there are there are a variety of uh, 
non-uniform days throughout the year and and yeah like we have world book day coming up so so that's one that's just built in you know <laughs> yeah, not a goose. Not bringing a goose in. I was really frustrated last night, and I was like, I'm just going to go outside and hang out with the chickens for a minute. And I went outside, and the second I was outside, Crumble ran for the area of the fence that I was at. And I was like, come on, man. So I went back in. I was like, Sam, can you come, like, <laughs> deal with Crumble? While I get to the coop, please. And he was like, sure, no problem. And he grabbed a rake. Not to hit the goose before any of you, like, opt out of this story. He grabbed a rake and, like, jumped the fence. And was just kind of, like, holding it in front of him. Because we've learned now that this goose will dive bomb you if he wants to. So just to have, like, a long thing between him and the goose. He just kind of, like, pushed, like, gently... <laughs> gently pushed crumble or encouraged crumble to like walk away from where I was. Right. And at a certain point crumble was so over it that he attacked the rake and he was just, he grabbed onto the rake and was just slapping the shit out of it for a full, like 20 seconds. And Sam was like, you done? <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> yeah, he got a lot of rage out. It was good. That morning, I needed to clean the coop out, so I texted my sister-in-law. I was like, hey, can Crumble be put in another area? And she was like, yeah, no problem. Sorry. And when she came out to grab him, she was like, if it helps, he's been mean to everyone today. I was like, I don't know that that helps. I don't want him being mean to anybody. <laughs> but but thank you for letting me know I'm not alone, I suppose. <laughs> it's, it's a puberty thing, if you want to think about it that way. They're in their mating season right now. So Crumble, the gander, is so much more aggro with everybody, basically until spring is done. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, it's not his fault, but he is a rude boy. Um, he hasn't outright attacked anybody except me, which again, I'm very grateful for. I'm glad it was me because I'm fine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm the smallest adult on the property, so. He doesn't try to attack anybody that's bigger than me. Again, I, I joke, but it's real. Sam's family, they're all tall. They're all tall, dude. The shortest one is 5'11". They're all tall. Um which is not my life. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, you know, just based on being around these geese all the time and seeing the way that he interacts with other humans, I think it's very much a, I'm going to size you up. And if I think I can win, <laughs> I will attack. And I'm the only one that he has thought to himself, I could win, <laughs> you know? So, it is what it is. Mm hmm. Bunch of fucking high elves. Just tall and beautiful and at one with nature. Must be nice. <laughs> Your 
goose hot. That's exactly. That's what makes me feel better is saying it's because he thinks I'm a threat. He thinks Apple's going to run away with me. No, the joke amongst all of our friends that I've said on stream before is that our wedding was like a wedding between elves and hobbits. That my family showed up and they're all, you know, five foot six max. And then Sam's family is five foot 11 minimum. So all of us together was just funny. It was just cute. It was just cute and funny, you know. Um, and now I'm... I'm a hobbit that's moved to the magical elven city. And I just got to I just got to figure out my shit, you know. <laughs> no, our wedding was here. Sam's family is way bigger than mine. So, after we talked about it for a while, it was it would be so much easier to move my family here for a wedding than to move his family there for a wedding. Um so that was mostly what we based it on. <laughs> yeah. Apple's like, bro, you are toxic. Maybe I will run away with that handsome human. Have you guys seen this game? There's a game called Lurkbait. Have you guys seen this? I found this through Luxie. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very silly. Hold on. It's a, it's, a, it's a Twitch game. It's a game for chat to play. Um, and you can basically set it up, you connect your Twitch to it, and then you create catches, which can be pictures of anything. Um, but, there, but there's also just fish in there. And you use channel points uh, to cast a line to, to fish. <laughs> It's, it's, it looks so silly. We should try it. Hold on. I'll, hold on. Let me try and set it up. Wait a minute. Uh, and we can put it on our BRB screen. You guys can just fish when we're on BRB. It'll be funny. <laughs> I've only made one custom thing to fish for. Boone was playing this. I've seen it. It's really fun, especially the custom ones. Is there a reason we stopped using the word game? I stopped using the word game so much because um, we would get it set up and I would walk away for a break. And when I came back, it wouldn't have synced up with chat. So chat would just be spamming words, but words wouldn't pop up. It was very strange. We should try it again, though. Okay, create a channel point reward in your Twitch dashboard. Paste this name in there and make sure they match. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I I decide everything about the re the redemption. Okay, let's see. Add a new custom reward. 
This is the name. The cost. How much should it cost to go fishing? Give me a general idea of how many <laughs> channel points you guys have. It must be crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Skip the request queue. Oh, ooh, this is fun. Allow a player to trigger a cast with gifted subs as well. Each gift sub gets one cast. Oh my goodness. We would we need to add a bunch of really funny custom stuff in here if we're going to do that. I'll leave that off for now. We'll just have it set up with channel points currently. Connect to Twitch, authorize, lurk bait, authenticated, noise, create. It's just channel. It's just channel points. So it's it's not. <clears throat> it's not gambling. The thing you get back is a is a funny picture that's worth nothing. <laughs> it's a funny picture of a fish. Hmm. All players to type a command in chat to queue up a display of the decks. No. Allow mods to give a free cast to an added user, sure. Okay, I'm just gonna say save. And then <laughs> This is it. This is it, this is the game. Um, is there a channel point reward that's available now or have I not turned it on yet? Go fishing is what it's called. Oh, <gasps> Brandling Castle Line. <gasps> oh, we can't hear it. Hee <laughs> hee. Nice. <laughs> Oh my god, so many of you have gone fishing. <laughs> Hold on. Let me... There we go. Allow transparency. <laughs> there should be a cooldown on there, is there not? Hold on, let me see. 
Slow down the limit. Okay, I've adjusted it. <laughs> I think here this might take some time. It might, yeah. Here. Oh my gosh. A three star uncommon, goodness gracious. Here, we'll do this. <laughs> There should be a cooldown now. You got some junk, nice. Okay, good. Oh, nice. A three star uncommon. <laughs> We're fishing now, I guess. There's no music in the game, no. Because it's meant to just run on your stream. The dash POV. Yes. <laughs> I assume it's queued, yeah. And it'll just eventually show you everybody <laughs> that's done one. I know, eggs. I agree. Don't worry. Since this is gonna be going for a while, we're gonna turn the volume off and we'll just let you guys have, have your little fishing going in the corner <laughs> while we hang out. Mm. I keep forgetting to turn my little light on. My little light, my little light. I'm really excited for one of you to get my custom. <laughs> there's, a, there's one custom one in there. I want to add a bunch of them, but. <clears throat> oh, amazing, Wooly. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin is, you know, it's it's all good news. It's it's small good news all the time. So, <clears throat> very grateful. A turtle. God damn. <laughs> Kaylin is um, Terry's kid that's been in the hospital. A hermit crab. Clarkie and I were just talking about hermit crabs. She has a she has a bunch of shells from the beach, and she was like, "I'm just realizing there might be crabs in these." <laughs> and I was like, "I don't think there are." She was like, "What about what about like snails?" There might be things like hiding inside. I was like, we've had them for a very long time and never seen a creature pop out of them. So I think we're probably good. I don't think there's anything, anything big living inside of them, you know. She was a little concerned, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wonder how it would be if the volume was just up a little bit. I feel like I want some some sounds, but not all of the sounds. Does that make sense? Like the fishing noise, I think is nice. But the like, yes, you got a thing, and here's some coins. It's those noises that I'd like to not have. Mm-hmm. Ambient noises would be nice, yeah. I wonder if, if I do this, you see the settings too. Okay, let's see. Um, special catch volume. Maybe if I turn that all the way down. Oh, save and close. Let's see what it does now. No. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna edit this some more. No, not that one. Legendary. I think you're right. Yeah. Tana, you just got so much money. Um, so much, so much fake fish money. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, I think probably, oops, there we go. I think probably it's, um, there are specific ones, yeah, that'll have, like, certain noises. A lot of junk, a lot of junk coming in. So the question is, if we're on an ad break, because that's when I'd want, oop. It'd be nice if, if you could just, if there was a version of this game that just filled up the whole screen, you know? It's a dangerously low cooldown. Well, you're only allowed to do it twice in a day, so. But I was thinking about making it just once. 
It's hard for me to gauge how many are queued up at this point. I don't think the DVD bounce thing is a good idea. Ooh, three exclamation points? What is it? A legendary. What, but only two stars? <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, I can just turn it off for now. Oops. Wait, what happened here? There we go. I don't know, Otis. Are the coins for something? Um, I don't know. There's like a leaderboard built in. So maybe it's associated with that. Like the gold value of the fish that you've caught determine where you're, where you are on the leaderboard. Maybe it's that kind of a thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> Please put wide gobbio as a fish. I would love to. I don't I don't have a lot of those emotes on this computer. So, um Yeah, any anything that you'd like <laughs> in there as a custom fish. <laughs> Feel free to suggest. You can suggest it in the Discord, and then I can make sure that I get those images. Ooh, it's pretty. Just joined. How do we fish? With channel points. I've turned it off for now, though, because the second I opened it, like, a hundred people <laughs> used them to go fishing um, because we accidentally didn't have a limit in place. So I'm pausing it until we've caught up, and then I'll, I'll open it again with some adjusted <laughs> things on there. Whatever you guys think would be funny, feel free to suggest it. Oh, oh, a very strange vase. Whose strange vase is that? Uh, yeah, we're accidentally fishing for a while here until we've caught up with the queue and then we're gonna play some Terra Nil. <clears throat> and I'm really hoping somebody gets the the custom the custom fish. No, I'm pretty sure we could have a Wilk fish in there. Pre-roll ads are back on disgusting. It's a legend. It's a legendary. Cause it's the only one that I made in there. So I made it expensive. Or not expensive, but like, but rare. It's rare. Oh, 
Another turtle. Nice. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, we can put all my D&D &D characters in there. You ba Literally, you just like put a picture in, put an image file in, name it, describe it, um, and then uh, write down how heavy it is and how much gold it's worth. <laughs> and depending on how much gold you say it's worth, that determines its rarity. <clears throat> Oh. I wonder if it's possible to fail at catching a fish. I don't think so, because you're, you're using channel points to fish, you know. You'll catch something. It's just how, like, did you catch trash or did you catch, you know, a hermit crab. <laughs> Gosh, so many. So many fishings. It's fun seeing what fish are in here. I wonder how many fish they have like preloaded in the game. Might say on Steam. Hold on. Store page. All casts are automatically queued and nobody will miss out on a chance to fish. There are four different weather options. That is true. I set it to the more like autumnal, like sunset vibe, but um, you can change it like this. It's winter now. It's cute. You got a shoe. Nice, bud. Okay, there's over 90 things that are built in. And then how many customized things can you put in? Choose minimum bits, allow for multiple casts. It doesn't say how many uh, I'm able to put in as customs. I mean, it's because it's because I <laughs> it said that the gold value can be anywhere up to a thousand. So I just made it a thousand. <laughs> But again, depending on how much you say it's worth, that determines the rarity. So if I was like, yeah, it's, you know, one gold or whatever, then um, then it would be super common. It tells you how many there are in the queue. Does it? Where? Oh, Fisher's in line. Oh, look at that. There's 15. Reconnect, pause the queue. Change the weather, turn auto hide on. Oh, so like if it's not being used, then it'll go, it'll hide and then pop back up, I guess. 
do a test cast. See the leaderboards. More junk, a coffee cup, we love it. Can I make it so the coffee cup is worth more? <laughs> let me let me dink around with your system, please. This is um a game that is played by chat. So and, and game is very loose here. <laughs> chat is using channel points to redeem uh uh, fishing. To go fishing. We've got 11 fishers in line currently, so. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I should make a little, I'll make a little Dodger Coffee Co. cup. It's fun because you can make your own trash, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know what amount of gold counts as junk tier, but like, oh my God. Wait, I have, wait, I have such an idea. Hold on. I will wait until this one's done. Hold on. The, okay, wait a second. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> yes. Okay, hold on. Hold on. This is going to be so worth it, guys. Okay, pause. Pause, 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 pause. Okay. I'm going to hide it for a second. Go into settings. Oh, my God. Um... Custom, edit custom catches. Add a new custom catch. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. Okay, this one, great. Wait, can I make it trash though? It's popping up as common. I want it to be trash. <laughs> can I make it trash, please? All right, that's fine. Wait, why? Save. One, one. Oh, it's because I put question marks in the title. <laughs> um, okay, good, great. I'm going to turn on custom only so you guys can see the custom ones really quick. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. This is a picture of Susie Sheep that my husband made for Clark. <laughs> 
and I wanted it as I wanted it to pop up as trash. But it didn't. That's okay. <clears throat> Ah, oh, will you get the ultra rare? Will one of you get the ultra rare though? I think I need to turn it down. It doesn't need, it's not that important. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, pause. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna make it so the other one isn't worth quite so much. Edit custom catches. Edit. This one will be worth. There. Save. Okay. Uh, okay. Save. Okay. All right. Three chances left. <laughs> Another Susie sheep. I'm sorry, Casey. Yeah, I'll open it back up in a sec. We're almost through the queue. Last one. Yeah! <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can add whatever you want, which is just so fun. <laughs> Why was I here, dude? I didn't mean to. Okay. All right. So yeah, let's go back in here and say... Um, where is it? Oh yeah, not custom only mode. Save and close. And then edit the fishing command. We're gonna make it so it doesn't cost as much. Um, but, For now, you can only redeem it once per stream. And uh, we'll have it so that it's, it's only during, um, we'll have it so that it's only during breaks. What'd you get? A carp. A corp. Nice. All right. That's that. That's that's the fishing game. <laughs> it's very cute. Do you know if the images can be animated? They can't be GIFs, because I tried to do the, the Slav Squat dudes and it didn't want it. <laughs> it's like, it has to be... It has to be a stable image. Hi, Besso. Um.
<laughs> Lies P is very good. It's a very good game. Big fan. Um, I'm gonna make you. God, can I make you smaller? Leaderboard, miscellaneous. Ah, resolution. Same size. <laughs> Same size, dude. Does it need to be reopened? Resolution settings apply on your next start. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll close the app. It said it crashed, but I did close it all on my own. Oh my gosh, we were all, all of us uh, in Sunforged, we were talking about how like, like Shane has the D and D cookbook thing. And he was like, but all of the games that I play are online. So I can't like make something from the D and D cookbook for, you know, like a, like an in-person group. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I used to, cause we were talking about how, um, we would totally play like a much longer session of Sunforged. <laughs> Um, hold on, just making sure it's still working. Yep. Good. Should go fishing beyond now? Yeah, because it just queues it up. So. Uh, okay, and then... Caramel. Oh, it's a bit fuzzy now because I made it smaller. Interesting. I guess I should make it bigger again. That's too bad. Terranel, why aren't you opening? Um... Come on, open up. Okay, go to game. Oh, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna rename this to fishing. <laughs> Because I realized if I swapped that out, then our little fishing window would suddenly turn into something else. Should not be there. This should be down here. <laughs> okay, good, yeah. Wow. All righty, here we go. Oh no. What? 
Oh, man. What'd you get? Beautiful. Back to the game. Um, does this game need warnings or not really? I have no idea. This is just a chill, nice time, this game. It's just chill. Okay. So this is the game that everybody told me I should play when we played, um, that game where, that cleaning up the ocean planet game. New restoration, I guess. Beginner's Guide to Ecosystem Restoration. Okay. This book serves as a guide to the intricate process of restoring an environment from a wasteland to a thriving ecosystem. The process is not always easy, and even with this guide, you will need to experiment to understand exactly what needs to be done. In the pages that follow, you will find descriptions of the regions, flora, and fauna you're likely to encounter. The book also contains blueprints of machines and structures that will help you in your task. If you are successful, you will eventually no longer need this book. When that happens, I ask that you pass it along, that it may serve someone else. Good luck with your journey of restoration. Okay. There are a variety of approaches to wasteland reclamation. What is yours? Want to create beautiful, vibrant landscapes? Oh, recommended for players seeking a relaxing experience. Re recommended for players with strategy game experience. Not recommended for a first playthrough. I will be a gardener. Confirm. To begin with, some basics. Pan the camera by moving your cursor to the edge of the screen. Oh my god, I hate that. Alternatively, you can press and hold the middle mouse button. Much better, thank you. You can also pan with, oh, that's, yeah. We went up, we, we slowly went up in preference for me. Zoom in and out. Select and place a turbine, okay. Oh, does it have to be on rocks? Okay. Now that you have electricity, you can clean the soil. Fit four top. No, because I don't, I don't like, um, I don't know. To me, it, that would be distracting to have the fishing thing up during like normal game time. We take pretty consistent breaks. So I figured during a break, we can just have the fishing game up for the whole break, you know? Clean the soil. Try to fit four toxin scrubbers as far from the turbine as possible. Okay. Some buildings can be rotated with R or the mouse wheel. Select the irrigator and try this. Um... Clean soil provides the perfect place to grow greenery. Greenery provides resources which are used to create buildings. Construct three irrigators on clean soil. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Those are sprinklers.
Okay. If ever you're lost, always look in the handbook for hints about what to do next. Increasing the landscape's greenery is your primary goal. Remember to keep an eye on your available resources. Get the greenery target to 30%. Okay. Um, so then... It says we can have more of these. But I don't know... If it makes sense to do that, maybe we should do this. I don't know. And then some of this action. Cut me to 29. Okay. Okay. Oh no, it's bigger. <laughs> it's so much bigger now. Okay. Reclaim 58 more greenery to unlock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, what's this? A water pump. Pumps water to fill dry riverbeds. Ooh, okay. All right. Here we go. That's nice. This is very satisfying. <laughs> Oh my god, I did a voice during Sunforged um on Sunday and Sam in the in the group chat was like fucking Linda Belcher over here. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Bobby Yeah, I'm just saying, he doesn't have to be so loud, you know.
Irrigators have six different configurations, fit these different shapes together to maximize greenery coverage. Crystallizes nearby greenery, creating rock. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. What's the premise or what are we accomplishing? Um, we are in a place that is completely devoid of life and we're trying to bring back the ecosystem with technology, basically. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm sure that I'm going to be given ways to, like, expand the greenery into areas like this, but I'm like, ooh, that bothers me. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, that bothers me. Ooh. What are you? Creates a new riverbed, but poisons the land around it. Oh, interesting. So I can do this. Hmm. Okay. Okay.
Sorry, I'm looking at this really weird. Okay. God, that one fucking square. Like so, I'm putting down so many of these. Oops, nope. Okay. Sure. Oh, my God. Whew. Six out of six, dude. Too close to another turbine. Uh-oh. Okay, let's do this then. Cause I need, cause I need to water it first, probably. Still won't let me do it. Why is that? Because the soil in here isn't good? But why? Is it just not close enough? Well, then I'm hosered. <laughs> Then I'm hosered, dude, because it's not close enough to nothing. Both of these are filled up, dude. Okay. 
Since the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce Finbos wetlands and forests. You'll need to begin to pay attention to the local climate. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, create wetland. Must be built on an irrigator near water and on low ground. Must be built on an irrigator. Oh, I see. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And now, no, okay. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. I love it, I love it here. We'll add more wet ones, more. Okay. Bees pollinate nearby greenery and create flowers. All right. Okay, what's this? Focuses sunlight, allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. Oh, to make like a desert? Oh. Oh, and it'll just destroy everything? Interesting, okay. Birds! That's what I'm talking about. <gasps> Pretty! Oh, you're right, zooming in is very fun. Lots of flies, good. We got burbs, we got bees. Ashy nutrients, okay. We need ashy nutrients, all right. Uh, here we go. Oh, it has to be near a Finbos. Oh, I hecked up here. That's okay. Oh, shit. Oh my gosh, it literally burns everything. That's pretty tight, <laughs> to be honest. Uses nutritious ash to create forests. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah, woo. Reduces the cost of sun buildings. Unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. Uh, okay. Constructing a research center makes many primary reclamation buildings cheaper. Now that you've learned the basics of restoration, you need begin to address the regional climate. The climate is defined by these attributes. Right now we are only interested in humidity, but these will change in the future. Reaching certain thresholds of attributes will have broad effects on the environment. Oh, buildings that grow plants like the irrigator or the beehive are also affected by regional climate attributes. Okay. 
Many buildings modify the climate slightly, but some, like the cloud cedar, change it significantly. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in your reclamation journey. Good luck. Okay. Use the surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation. Increases ambient humidity. Okay, which we would like in the wetlands, I believe. Fungi in the forest, ferns on the river banks. Higher than 55% humidity. Um, one second, I'm getting a phone call. Whoa. BRB.
Hello! Sorry for the wait. How is a bike junk? If it's been chucked in the water and is rusted beyond repair, uh, it might be junk. I don't know. I wasn't here for it. Maybe it was a beautiful bike. Oh? Have we gotten any custom catches since I've been gone? The global cooldown is once per minute because y'all went so hard. <laughs> but I should make that lower, especially if it's only playing during the BRB. Here, I'll adjust it again. Okay. There's no cooldown now, but you can still only redeem it once per stream. Currently. Oh no. <laughs> I've made a mistake. I've made a huge mistake. How many are in the queue now? 21! Guys, stop! No one wants to Terra nil. No one wants to save the planet. Y'all just want to go fishing. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Uh, I don't know. It only lets you do minutes, hours, or weeks. Or minutes, hours, or days, I mean. For cooldowns. So, we can't have a cooldown less than a minute, it looks like. Uh, yeah, the leaderboard, we can always access the leaderboard. It's right here. Um, I'm, I didn't click yes to let chat bring up the leaderboard because it would it shows up in chat <laughs> and it was like yeah it scrolls it's just a big scrolling leaderboard that shows up in chat and I was like no that's okay <laughs> oh my god y'all Who's number one? Let's find out. Etken. Etken one. Mace Windu and Iburi are our top three. That's the top 20 right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, Bessa, we played a ton of Ultros. It's really good. A shark? Nice. Somebody said it would be cool to have coupons in here, like a Dodger Coffee Co. coupon, which I love the idea of, but I think it would suddenly make it illegal for some people to play. The only reason that people can, can play this, I think, is because nothing in it actually matters. <laughs> the money's fake. The items are fake. The currency that you use in chat to play is fake. I love that idea, though. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do it. Channel points are fake, but I still can't bet on predictions. Really? Even predictions you can't do? But it doesn't, but none of it matters. There's no like benefit. Interesting. Predictions are also blocked for me. Wow, interesting. Oh my gosh, you got a crown, dude. <laughs> nice. Clarity's first time fishing got a gold crown. Yeah, I think it depends country to country. Um, current, I don't, I, it doesn't seem like you guys are ever able to hear when there's construction happening outside, but, um, we're basically up until this point, um, none, everything on our farm is either grass or it's gravel, which is fine. Uh, we don't mind it too much until it's really muddy and then it sucks. But my in-laws were like, we'd really like to pave an area. Ooh, pretty. My in-laws were like, we'd really like to pave a little area. And I was like, I would also like to pave a little area. We got grass for days, just like a small square that, you know, the kids can like draw in and chalk when it's summertime and we can put our, you know, our outdoor chairs and things outside. So, um, my father-in-law was like, don't worry. I'm just, I'll, I'll facilitate that whole thing. So they were dumping a bunch of basically like the bottom. We have to use wood to outline where the paving is going to go and then put, um, I, I don't know what you would call it. It's not gravel, but it's like a, it's like a, soil rock mix basically down and then the paving goes over it. Um, so I came outside and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> so much all over the place now. Yeah, base. Most importantly for skating. That's what I said. I was like, I would love for us to just have like a little track all the way around the house. And they were like, that might be a bit expensive to pave all the way around the house. And we're like, that's fine. It doesn't need to be all the way around. It's okay. But yes, Clark's very excited to skate on the paved area. Does Sam ever talk about the stuff that he gets into during GTA RP? Uh, no. If I ask, sure. But, you know, he's been doing goofy shit in GTA RP since frogs walked on Earth. I don't know. I was trying to come up with something ridiculous. <laughs> I 
Um, I always know what character he's playing. Um, and I know the general vibe of that character. And I know because he's played a cop so many times at this point, uh, I know when he's been pulled into a really long court case. <laughs> because I'll be like, homie, it's 9 a.m. Where the fuck are you? And he'll be like, I'm so sorry. This fucking fake court case in GTA RP has gone on for five hours. <laughs> The other day, he was like, I'm going to be a little late coming to bed because um, I'm going to, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? He's like, I need to promote some fake police officers so that my fake police officer doesn't need to be there all the time. <laughs> GTA RP sounds wild. It is, yeah. It's a it's a goofy time. <laughs> Pigs are good, yeah. They're doing good. They've just got their little area. I gave them some bread this morning. We had some bread that was like a little too hard for us, but just fine for them. So gave them some bread. The chickens are doing good. I sprouted a bunch of lentils for them. I was talking about that yesterday, and they loved them, so I need to sprout some more. And it might all be in my head, but I feel like their eggs were bigger after that. So who knows? I don't know. Did the goose calm down? Not at all. <laughs> but again, I'm the only person he's attacked, so it's whatever. Jemny, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, guys. Um, we're accidentally trapped in a fishing mini game for chat. So <laughs> we are playing Terra Nil, I swear. I walked away to take a phone call. Um, and now we have a queue of 27 people uh, trying to fish. So welcome to the stream, guys. <laughs> welcome, Ga- Yeah! You got, you got it. <laughs> we have two custom ones built in right now. Um. Oh my god. These sharks are worth so much. What the hell? All right. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we'll do. Hello, everybody. Put it in the corner. Two circles. <laughs> Two circles, you know? It's fine. <laughs> um, I'm currently covering quests, though. Not ideal. So I'll go here. Okay. All right, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I want one of these. Two 
too close to another cloud seeder. Where did I put one? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. Oh, right here. Okay. Okay, but we need the humidity to go way up. Way up. So... Yeah, it just goes on a rock. Oh, but it needs... Mm. Let's see. Get another one of these guys. Okay, and then... Ah, oh, there we go. Been trying to do that for a while. All right. He's going up. Ideal plus five. Okay. Ooh, ferns on the riverbank. <gasps> ferns on the riverbank. Look. Cute. Yeah, we can meet the game. Okay. Ferns on the riverbank. Ferns on the riverbank. Up even more and water lilies will blossom and then we get the salmon run. Hell yeah. Okay. I want I want the wetlands to be like all of this. Hmm. So how do I do that? Because this won't work because there's no water near it. So do I have to excavate her? These excavators are the last resort. Yeah, I know. I know, I'm aware. Wait, why does this suddenly only have... Oh, these two are built up. Oh. No, we're really close to getting rain now. 
This bothers me. Why? Why doesn't it do more? All right, well. What happens? Because over here, it just kept burning. So I'm wondering how far the burn goes. It won't, it won't burn the wetlands. Because they're too wet. Makes sense to me. My goodness. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, well, let's start a forest, shall we? if I if I do this like what happens to the oh it just goes right back to being Ooh! <gasps> oh my goodness it's like meadow now there, it's always meadow. It's always meadow. Never mind. I was like, what the heck? Is that different? It's not. Isn't it spreading into these little areas here? Oh well. Hmm. Too close to another cloud cedar. Man, dude. we go. Zero percent. Yeah. 
Here we go. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Finbos. Okay. Yay! Plant life, life and climate reestablished. The final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. As you remove your presence, introduce Fauna to be the new custodians of the ecosystem. Okay, how do I recycle buildings? Okay. Recycles other buildings and stores a portion of their cost. Travels along rivers, collecting recycled material from loading docks. Oh, I see. Okay. Loads recycled material from the surrounding buildings and silos into a drone. Lots of recycling drone to travel up and down waterfalls. Sure. Use of a sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that's appropriate for them. Final step is the reintroduction of animals. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Animal species need to be scanned for. Open the scanning panel. Use these animal portraits to switch between animals, get a hint about where each species lives. Use this button to scan for the selected species. Each scan will give you information about the suitability of the area scanned. You'll need to find suitable habitats for at least three animals. Oh, okay. Hold on, though. Hold on. I'm still cleaning.
Okay, let's see. Lives in herds and wide open grassland. Lives in the reeds of a wetland. Oops. Scanning. In range of at least 10 wetland tiles. Use a sonar scan to uncover. confused about what it wants me to do. Use a sonar scan to uncover, but isn't that what I'm doing? Isn't that what this is? I do want clarification, yeah. What's, what is it asking me to do? It's telling you there's a requirement that was not met based on where you scanned. Um, okay. Oh, it needs Finbos as well. Which I guess there's a little bit of here. Um, okay, hold on. Yay, frog! Okay. Look at him! There's a little froggy! <laughs> okay. A forest which contains a beehive on a hill. Rest in a large lake. Can I only make one of these? You only need one. Oh, I can scan everywhere with it? Okay. Um, that's in a large lake. I don't know if these count as large lakes. Builds its home on a river near a forest. Okay. Sick. Prowls in a forest near a source of prey. beehives on hills, I don't think. I'll try this. Oh, nice. Geese. Source of prey. I can do the last one, but that's okay. They said I only needed three, right?
want the salmon run. There we go. Feel better now. Percentage of buildings that have been recycled. R right. What do I do with them? Oh, interesting. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. But it has to be on the water. Hmm. Yeah, it's my first time playing and I'm realizing there's definitely <laughs> some things that would be, uh, that are going to be good to know for next time. I can't recycle the recyclers, no. I was trying to do that earlier. I can't recycle the recyclers. Need to get this gone. Oh no, don't destroy the boat. <laughs> Okay.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to expand the river into these areas, which is annoying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I know. Thank you very much. Okay. The game gets nicer about recycling later on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. That's kind of like a an interesting puzzle element that winds up being part of it. Okay. Um, we are going to need this then. Oops. Do this. And then... Oh shit, I did the same thing again. <laughs> That's so annoying. Okay, hold on. One more time. this. We'll let the water populate or whatever. Okay. That might get us there now. Someone over here. Still isn't filling in. Come on, guys. Thank you. 
god. Please. Oh no, because this is technically land. <laughs> Saints preserve us. May I give a hint? No, you can give a hint after I've gotten myself out of hell. At this point, I do not want to know if my life could have been easier, okay? You have to understand. Fill up with water, honey, please. Fill up with water! <laughs> Thank you. Ugh. Okay. planet. Go, go. My hand hurts. Appreciate? What does that mean? Oh, just look at it? Mm. I do want to look at my hard work. Yeah. Animals discovered five out of six. Did my best, dude. Oh, okay, so this is next, I guess. Can I rotate the planet? No. Okay, desolate island. Let's go. Begin by clearing the surrounding oceans and reintroducing plant life. Toxin scrubbers are integral as they cleanse both land and sea. Both greenery and clean ocean contribute toward your goal. Climate manipulation is possible from the onset. Building an island ecosystem is a unique challenge. Restoring life to the oceans is your number one priority. 
Using toxin scrubbers to cleanse the seawater, fewer river networks means you'll need to use a monorail infrastructure. Okay. Here we go landing again. Okay. 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 Uh, let's start here, I guess. I'm not going to feel so precious about getting everything filled in now that I know how the game works and I know that it's going to it's going to fill in the blanks for me, you know. Construct one more turbine. Okay. Here we go. Mineralizer. Crystallizes the salt in the ocean water to create rock. Oh, okay. So then can I do this? Oh, okay. It, sc it scrubbies the water too. Okay. Interesting. So let's put another one here. Oh, for some reason I thought that those were. Okay, never mind. I should have put that here. It's because it's deep, I see. Yeah, I heckied up there. That's okay. Okay, what's this? Create a small island on which buildings can be placed. Oh ho.
Why not? Why can't I put it there? I thought that's what it's for. It worked here. What happened? <laughs> there's no power, but there's power here. It, but it just doesn't reach. Okay. Oops. out there. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Increase biodiversity, restore beaches, mangroves, and tropical rainforests. Okay. Construct three more combustors. Combustors. Oh, these. <laughs> what does this do? Burn surrounding vegetation to increase atmospheric temperature. More carbon dense vegetation is more effective. Okay. Um, okay. Well. One more wetland tiles. Okay. Okay, what's this? Salinator increases the salinity of the surrounding area, allowing mangroves to flourish. Okay. Requires wetlands. But it won't let me grab it. Construct three more combustors. Okay, but we don't have... Hmm. Okay. Let's do a bit more of this action. Thank you. 
cannot grow. The temperature is not high enough. Right, okay. The temperature is two degrees Celsius. Huh? Around a hundred percent humidity, <laughs> but our temperature is too low. I don't know, I guess. Okay, what happens when I do this? Okay. One. Uh. Hold on. Hold on, buddy. I'll give you some stuff to burn. Now, what's this? Oh, a couple things. What's this? Capture sand to form beaches. Must be built on a toxin scrubber. Oh, sick. Okay. Let's make a beach. And what's this? Pillars connected in triangles form shady areas where tropical forests thrive. Must be built on the side of a cliff. Oh, interesting. Not ideal, not ideal, not ideal. Okay, uh, let's make more beach, I guess. I thought that would help the temperature go up, but I guess not. Yeah, cozy 13 degree beach. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's nice.
But it has to be grass to turn it into beach. Okay. Okay. how close they have to be, huh? All right, sick. What's this? Nodes in range of another connect to allow the movement of buildings along the monorail network. Um, okay. What for, though? I guess it'll tell me. Oh, that's not what I needed to do. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Wait, are those too far away or what? One more, okay. Okay, they have to be connected, I think. the monorail node ability one more time. What? Move a building from in range of this monorail node to in range of any other. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. 
So I could move this. Here somewhere. No, apparently not. Just kidding. No, because the monorail is delivering electricity, right? Is the idea. Okay, I see. All right, what's this? Coral Lab grows coral from polyps, which can be moved to the monorail into clean ocean. Must be built on an irrigator. Okay. Temperature needs to be higher. Okay. Yeah, yeah, dude, what's that all about? Why do I have to think in my cozy game? Okay, we need the temperature to go up though. And I'm not super clear on what helps the temperature go up, to be honest. burning stuff oh I can use this now oh, wait a minute Okay. Uh I don't have these near enough burnable stuff. Too close to another turbine. <sighs> Hi, Brett. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's cozy. It's making me use my brain quite a bit, which is unfortunate. <laughs> hmm, okay.
Oh, we're nearly there. Nearly high enough. Where else can I burn shit? Not quite. Almost. Oh. Ideal temperature. Move the coral lab into clean ocean to create a coral reef. Wait, so where do I have to place this? Do I not just place it in the water? Does it go on something? Built on an irrigator. Which are what? I can't remember. Oh, those things. Oh no. Oh, okay. I fucked that up. Okay, here we go. We're okay, we're figuring it out. Okay. Yay! Yay! Okay, and now it's and now it's just used up, so I have to put a different one in. Coconut palms, once we get to 30 degrees, 40 degrees, dragonflies, thunderstorms begin. As long as we have 100% humidity and we're above 35 degrees. Okay. All right, gang, let's do it. Awesome. It's 26, 25, 26.
Okay, that's fine. It is puzzle-like, yeah, I agree. Okay, but doing this to the ocean. Yeah, we need more tropical forest. Okay, let's see. can be utilized for recycling. Connect your airship to the monorail network. Reintroduce marine and terrestrial animals. <sighs> All right. But we don't have we don't have thunderstorms yet. I need thunderstorms though. Working on it, gang, okay?
don't know why. I feel like these are so difficult to like <laughs> get right. Coconut palms, yes, let's go. Okay, we're at 30 degrees. We need 35 for thunderstorms, baby. Four. Thirty-five. What? What? But it said it would go up by one! Ah! It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. It's super duper fine. But I'm but I'm burning stuff over here. Why would it not go up at all? Thirty-five. More than thirty-five. Ah. Okay. Putting these shits everywhere, just desperately. Oh, that's gonna be too close. I didn't realize there was another one there already. <gasps> nope, just kidding. Yeah, thunderstorms! Woo! Here we go, baby. Look at the ocean! Yes! We did it. Oh, I'm so happy. <sighs> okay. Let's start slurping up some stuff. Okay. 
Okay, anything that gets slurped needs to be near the water. Connects to the monorail network, sends drones to recycle the areas at Recycle Beacons. Right, okay. Oh, I just have to have this guy going. Okay. Place on a monorail node to signify that a recycling drone should be dispatched to recycle there. Ah, oh, okay. Moves a rock from one location to another. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just like these things, they're really satisfying. <laughs> Cycling beacon here. Oh, this is interesting though. So it's going to destroy that now, right? So I need to be careful about what things I get rid of when. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this guy's still just out there. All right. Um. Okay. Okay, then let's put all of our shit away. Okay, so that's mostly going everywhere. I need another one over here. What do you mean, invalid target? What? 
Oh, okay. Not really what I wanted, but that's all right. Oh, I see, okay. There we go. Okay. Um. Okay, so let's come do this then. Perfect. Then this one. Okay. Then where do I want to go? Maybe like all the way out here, because all of these would still be connected. So come out here, do this one, and then we'll go around this way, I think. Yeah, um, when I was looking at the recommendation list for games, so many people had recommended this game, and also Jesse just recommended this game to me. So I was like, fine, fine, I'll play it. Uh oh. Hopefully, it does those in order. We're about to find out. <laughs> It does, oh, that's so nice. Okay, we just need the temperature to go up more, which we can. Fi I'm gonna figure that out after I've picked everything up. I think. Dupe and dupe and dupe and dupe and dupe. Okay. Okay. reach everything. That's okay. Hmm. 
Cool, did it. <laughs> Easy, great. Oh no. <laughs> That's okay. Did him out of order. My bad. Oh. Great. Good job. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we haven't looked at the animals yet. Like, what animals we can... Uh find or place where so that'll be fun Covering it. <laughs> Look. Cute. There are, you're right. Look. Little crabbies on the beach. Right, we're getting we're getting out. We're getting out of here. All right, let's see. Beach dwelling reptile lives on an island where it can retreat into its shell. Okay, what about here? On a small island. Does that not count? It's a small island. Is it because it's up against this? Oh, on a small island in range of the beach. Oh, it needs to be like near here. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. I was confused about what. It is in range of the beach. Does it not, it doesn't need to be a beach island? Is that what's happening here? Oh my goodness. Covering up my scan area, dude. Go away. Not enough beach tiles. There we go. Unusually shaped creature glides in the ocean near river estuaries and coral reefs. Near river estuaries. Oh, 
Slides on the ocean. What's a river estuary? What does that mean? The mouth of the river. Okay. Where the river meets the sea. I mean, that's what I scanned. River meets the sea here and here. There we go. Colorful bird makes its home in lush forest canopies beneath clear skies. Oh, can't be near a building. Okay, fair enough. Waiter combs for food among the sand of the beaches and the mud of the wetlands. Alrighty. Aquatic predator lives in both dense coral and in the waters of mangrove forests. So it wants forest and coral. That's a bit difficult. Oh, mangrove. That's this stuff, isn't it? shark. Pelagic mammal swims in the deep waters of the ocean far from land. A whale. <gasps> we found them all. Perfect. Yeah. Let's see if we can find our animals. There's our, there's one of our sharks up there. I don't know if we actually see a whale show up over here, but there's that. Turtles. Cute. Parrots. Alrighty. I love that it has you collect everything. That like part of it is leave no trace sort of shit, you know? That's good.
The fishing game is called Lurk Bait. Chat, how do I fish? Uh, in Channel Point Redemptions, I think it's called Go Fishing. You can only do it once per day because people were spamming it. So we made it once per day. There you go. You're going fishing, buds. Oh, no. A jellyfish plushie? Why was that in the water? Marlin. Love Marlin. A broken sword? Damn. Y'all are fishing. Truly fishing. Why does it only say 70% though? Because I didn't. Hold on. So if I go back. What? No, wait, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. Back to world map. Ugh. Okay. Polar biome. Okay. Use seismic detonators to cause fissures to erupt, bringing lava to the surface. Use geothermal plants and solar amplifiers to melt snow, allowing you to clean the ground beneath. Detoxifying the polar ocean, as it is also a source of life. Oh my goodness, okay. Uses resonance to excavate a small area, causes fissures to erupt. Provides electricity and melts snow in a large area. It seems so weird to me that they want you to melt snow, but... We're detoxifying the land, I guess. It's fine.
Okay. Oops, no, no, no. Oh, okay. It's not what I wanted to do. The tooltips are getting in the way. Hmm, okay. So I can actually use these to like, guide lava to different places because it, yeah. That's pretty sick, actually. Okay, cool. here. Flash freezer. Freezes surrounding vegetation and liquid to lower the atmospheric temperature. Forms ice on clean oceans. Okay. It's really good. Yeah, I love it. I had this game recommended to me for so long and I get why. It's a great game. Um, I'm playing it on just the like... I just want to have a chill time and restore the ecosystem uh, difficulty, and it's been great. <laughs> it's been very great. Big fan. Come on, lava. Yeah. Okay. Yes. put one there. Um, okay. More grass. Not enough grass yet. Okay. Did someone catch a Duke hands? Nice. Mm. 
Okay. What's this? Pulls water out of the surrounding vegetation to lower ambient humidity. Okay. Oh, it has to go on a rock, though. Um, okay. Then let's do this. Let's make the most use out of this. So it looks like the process is cleanse it with this thing, put down some grass. Actually, do this. Use this thing. To lower the humidity. Okay, fungus in the forests under, oh, greater than 40% humidity. Oh, do we want the humidity up first? Interesting. It says the humidity is going up. But is it? Thank you. 
I'm going really overboard with these, but I don't know that it matters that much. The number goes up, and then once the lava, like, does its thing, it goes back down. There we go. Okay. Increase biodiversity, grow tundra on the highlands, start fires to create ash on which to grow forests, <clears throat> freeze lava flows to create rock fields to grow lichen, use monorails to create kelp forests in the ocean. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, pelagic fish. Need the temperature to be one degree higher, or no, two degrees higher for butterflies. Brought it up a little bit. Okay. Migratory birds return. Okay, so we still need the temperature to be going up. Let's see, what have we got here? Arboretum. Must be built on an irrigator. Creates a tundra. Humidity is ideal. Excavates a large ring around it. Will cause fissures to erupt. Oh, interesting. City D builder. They themselves call it a reverse city builder. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Dry brush. So what? Hmm. Cools lava and forms rock. Ugh. Where do I want to do this? Maybe just this. Temperature went down a little bit though, which we don't want.
create more rock tiles. Okay. Fine. Keep touching my eyes and forgetting I have like a singular lash on each la on each eye. Oh, that's so pretty. The temperatures needs to go up, unfortunately. So, I don't know how to do that other than making more lava. <laughs> This is the polar biome. So they're saying that I have to like detoxify the land first. So this is like a toxicity thing. So I have to detoxify the land and then. No, why did I do that? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, yep. Well, that worked. And then you take it with a monorail somewhere else. <gasps> I totally forgot about this. Wait, yeah. I can set some fires. Here we go. OK. 
Okay. Wait, how high do I need it to be? Higher than 15 for the migratory birds to return. All right, next. Cleaning it up. It's all good. I can't start a fire here, why not? I have to be next to like l lush land. All right. so much for all the gifted subs. Welcome, guys. Please take the time to say thank you. It's interesting. You can kind of do some of the uh, cleanup work almost ahead of time. <laughs> by just destroying these buildings during the start fires process. Yes, everything is fine. We want it to be on fire, <laughs> oddly enough. set that on fire now. Okay. Yeah, I'm def I mean again, I'm playing it on it's not really a strategy game mode. <laughs> so, I think it's really forgiving with like what order you do things in and how much money you have to buy stuff and things like that. So, I'm not stressing is what I'm trying to say. on these ones. Must be built on an irrigator. Requires high ground. Oh. Interesting. So then can I burn this again? Oh my God, you can. <laughs> That's very silly. This isn't going up though. And I don't know why.
Hmm. I've played a lot of Dwarf Romantic, yeah. I play that with my kid, actually. I feel like playing that together. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see how this works. So if I send it here, and then it just dumps earth, what happens? Interesting, okay. And then this that used to be flat is pushed up. Cool, all right. <laughs> they just don't reach each other. Something interesting about this game is that, like, it really does look like you're making little factories to destroy the land. It's a very trust the process game of, like, how is this eventually going to look like it makes any fucking sense? <laughs> or, like, I had good intentions here.
It does not look like I'm I'm doing right by uh, the planet right now. <laughs> All right, so, God, if I put this here. I don't think it'll fill up with lava. Just kidding. It's definitely lava. Over 15 degrees. Okay. Oh, it can't go on there. Okay, um, well then, I guess we'll just burn it. Okay. No, why? Why doesn't it reach? super clear on how to achieve some of this stuff but that's okay we just need more rock and then I bet I bet it'll tell me a thing that makes it so that we turn the rock into normal ground again <laughs> 
It's probably how this is gonna go. I keep putting it off because I keep thinking, ah, I don't want that much rock, but, but I'm sure it's fine. Yep. Okay. Must be built on an irrigator. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's happening! Oh no, and now the temperature is going down because I'm getting rid of the lava. Oh my goodness, okay. Man, dude, dude, okay. I guess just set more stuff on fire, like. I kind of want to start over, retry map, yeah. I want to start over. I want to start over, I think. Okay. Okay, so we need to get rid of the toxicity, but first thing we have to do is get rid of all of the ice. So step one is lava. Was that not close enough? Shit. making pathways. up here, and over here, oops, and down here. Hmm. 
I want like a line like along here. So how, yeah, maybe this. Okay. Trying to make myself roads, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's hard because in your mind, you're like, okay. It needs to be cold eventually. <laughs> so, and you don't realize until you do something, whether you're going to make, obviously with lava, the temperature's going up, but like you, you're not totally sure what's going to make the temperature go up or down, you know? Okay, let's start cleansing. So we have to we have to prioritize the water. It's the thing. Okay, I need to get something out here. Guys, please. Lava, please. I guess because it's not near one of these little shits. Here we go. So until, I think the highest we need to hit is 15 degrees, right? Yeah, yes. So until we've hit 15 degrees, we're not doing rocks. We're not getting rid of our lava, we need it. <sighs> oh. 
Okay. Let's get some humidity going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm Does humidity need to be? 70. We need to get we need to get it to 70% humidity. <sighs> okay. Don't want humidity lower. Forms ice. Do not want. No, I don't want any of those yet. Okay, we're still just we're still just trying to. Okay, same same shit. Same shit. I'm sorry to anybody who is getting annoyed by the fact that I'm just plopping shit wherever, <laughs> but it's feeling like that's the most uh, time effective way to play this game on this difficulty because I don't really need to worry about funds, you know? Oh, thank you. Nice. Oh my God, we got the birds back this time. Yes. 
All right, hell yeah. I guess I can use these once we have more like growth, right? Yes, I will need to go in a sec here. Hold on. All right. Oh no, ads. Okay, it's fine. I have to go anyway. Okay. We're in ad jail here. Until the ads are done and then we'll say bye. You got a starfish, dude. Congrats. I forgot that this pops up in front of me. Oh. Success. Here, we'll put, we'll put fishing in front. There. Yeah, there we go, that's better. Okay. I need to figure out how to save this game. There we go. Okay. Sick. Am I the only one that gets this reward is temporarily out of stock? Uh, buttons, have you already done it? You only get to do it once per day because of how many people... Oh, uh, junk vape. Love it. Because <laughs> of how many people are fishing. All righty. And Max Rogue, thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the Katogangu. Here, we'll grab, we'll take fishing with us to this screen. You're welcome. There you go. You can, you can watch fishing while we say bye. <laughs> Um, thank you. Welcome to the cat gang. I appreciate it. Uh, Endeavor, thank you for the 82. Jumni, thank you again for the raid. Wild Blast for the 14, plus 60 for the 20. Nadriachi for the 92. Bretto for the 45. Cordry for the 114. Citizen Quinn for the four years. Thank you so much. Happy anniversary. Crendall for the 117. Patience for the 41. Chiyuku for the gifted subs. Thank you so much, Chiyuku. I appreciate it. Um, and Resigne also gave a bunch of subs. Thank you, both of you. If you were gifted a sub, uh, please double check who gave it to you and take the time to say thank you. Brody, thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the cat gang. Sorry, my hands are really cold, so it's hard to do the signs. Appreciate it. And Steffenheimer, thank you for the eight months. Um, I didn't open up Raid Leader. That's my bad. So I will. I will find us somewhere to go. <gasps> NASA's 2024 astronaut graduation. Oh my gosh, that's cute. 
You want to go watch some astronauts graduate? Raid NASA. Fantastic. All right. Uh, we will pause this for now. Oh, oh, yes. Nice. It was the last one anyway. We love that. Have a fantastic day. Spread love, spread joy. I will see you tomorrow. I don't believe anything's going on tonight, so. See you around, gang. B uh, b b uh, bye. <laughs> I hit raid before I said bye, so. To those of you who opted out of the raid, um, hey. How's it going? You guys doing good? I hope so. All right, bye.